Hi, I'm Glenda Mackay and with me is my friend Richard Walsh from Thurlby Motors. Now, why have you dragged me out into this North Yorkshire forest today, Richard? Well, three years of tarmac rallying, Glenda, I thought this is a chance now for us to come and test your co-driving skills on a proper forest stage in North Yorkshire. How did I get involved in all this rallying lark in the first place? Three years ago, you ran the course car for me on a rally, to, if you remember, in Lincolnshire. Yeah. And you did so well on that that I thought, I've got to get her in the co-driver's seat before she gets you, in the driver's seat. Yeah, you were just a bit yeah. worried that I was going to actually beat you. Yeah, exactly. I've always been quite interested in... Uh, in oh, don't tell anybody. I won't tell anyone. All right. I've always been quite interested in, in racing, driving, and uh, I went and did some rallies for Richard, and uh, you know, we just came in the same team, didn't we? Yeah, we did. So, if there was anyone out there who was interested in starting rallying, where do they start? By getting a, a licence. And how do you get a licence? You apply at the RAC, it's a yearly licence, and you basically get three stamps on it, you have to do three events, and then you get national status, and you can get. And as a driver, how much is the cheapest car going to cost you? To buy a, a properly built rally car, the cheapest one will cost you around about £10,000. And that includes inside? The roll cage and all the safety features in it, yes, that okay. you need. So what are we going to do just now then? I think we're going, this is a stage in Cropton, it's about two miles loop and we're going to try, see how we're going on there. Brilliant, let's do it. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay. Before we set off, I get given a time card and have to get to the start post at a certain time. This is the notes for the section we're about to do. Very scary. I spend most of the time with my head down here reading these notes. This means things like 150 yards to a grid and then a right three means it's a medium to hard right turn. C means crest and these are the, the, the distance in yards. I've got to tell Richard everything because he's relying on me to tell him which way to go. And he's also relying on me not to throw up in the middle of the race. Let's hope that that doesn't happen today. Let's get going, Richard. It's 150 before we meet a kettle green. enjoyed mad dangerous sports and I did actually do my racing driver's license at 19 years old but you know I got the chance to do the rallying and I just thought this is more me the sort of rugged off-roading kind of slipping the car about I've loved it and I've never looked back since I'm actually quite scared of doing the co-driving <laughs> so the women take over on the co-driving but there are women drivers as well as Natalie Barrett Barbara Armstrong, there are drivers up there, you know, doing the do. I actually like to do both, and hopefully, you know, one day I will be able to drive as well as co drive. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Go. Woo! That was fantastic! Well done, Richard, that was brill. But I think it's time for you to practice co driving. And it's time for me to have a drive. Yeah! Way! Well, we're all set up and ready to go. Richard is looking suitably worried. <laughs> but I'm absolutely loving it and I'm raring to go. Let's get this baby fired up. Whoa! Men in rallying take female co-drivers seriously because there's so many good ones about. Um, not to say that men can't co-drive as well. We are definitely taken seriously, you know, just because I'm blonde and young. You know, I'm as able to do it as anybody else, if not more so. I've come sort of um, first in class, second in class, third in class most times. 
My ambitions in rallying are for me and Richard to carry on as driver and co-driver and do um, and that's some national events, some more national events and maybe for me to do some driving one day and him to be my co-driver, that'd be fun. <laughs> What would I say to the guys who are saying, get out, I'm a woman, I'm a blonde woman, and I don't know? I'd say, well, just watch this, mates, and see what you think. Oh, dear, Richard. What have I done? You've broken my car and scared me to <laughs> I can't have broken the car. You have. The poor car. Oh, look, it's bleeding. What is it that's actually broken? No, it's a drive shaft that's gone on it, so it stops now. So does that mean I'm not allowed to drive again? Uh, I'm looking forward to your co-driver's seat next time. Please let me drive again. No, co-driving. It's a lot better. I was doing really well as well. I suppose that means we've got to walk home, does it? And it's a long walk home. Come on. See you later. You still my friend? Yeah, all right, go on. <laughs>
You need like four foot long arms to change gear. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what are you doing there? Yeah. How does anyone drive one of these on the road? Right, we're going to climb up this bank next. We're going to leave it in second gear, and you've got to keep the power on till you're right at the top. So really, so okay. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> That's it. And off on the way down That's again. It. Yep, just ease it off right off as you're coming down. That's it. Still quite a good amount of engine braking in second gear. Although you do go a bit faster than than in first gear. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people find that, lose their wheels completely. When you put the power back down, it just bites and yeah. it takes you off in some direction. <laughs> and that, I'd like to add, is why I stalled on that slopey bit. <laughs> oh my God! That's it, just aim to keep your wheels as straight as you can. You, you just can't tell where your wheels are! Oh my God! <laughs> and how, what angle do you have to get one of these two to turn over? Oh, 45. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Oh. You're absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, so just keep steering it. Oh. Well, I think I've got the hang of this. Um, yeah, pretty good, eh? You're doing all right. You're doing absolutely fine. You know, I've always fancied doing, you know, the Harry Dakar rally, camel trophy, something like that. What do you reckon? Mm, um, a bit more experience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that was fun. I think I even picked up a few of the instructor's pointers. Join me later when I'll be catching up on a few of the other events available in this 4x4 challenge day, including quad bikes and a JCB. JCB? What do I do with a JCB? Cars tend to fit neatly into their own nice little categories. You know the kind of thing. Compact city cars, sensible saloons, ravishing little roadsters. A car to suit the kind of person you are and the type of life you lead. And this is what Toyota have come up with, a model that's now sportier, sexier and has a roof that comes down, which means they've done away with the T-top of old. And the price, well, there's good news there because that's come down just like the roof. At £18,495, it's four grand cheaper than the previous model, bringing it in line with the MGF and the NX5. However, a car in the roadster market has to look right, and there's no denying that this new MR2 is a striking car to look at. But original, it isn't. The wheel arches wouldn't look out of place on an Audi TT, and there is definitely a touch of the Porsche Boxster around the rear. It would have been nice to see some of the innovation that went into the new Celica in the lines of the MR2. But it's once you get inside that you realise Toyota's designers have completely lost the plot. They couldn't decide what look they were going for, so they've chucked the lot in. You've got deep dials like you'll find in the 156. There's an influence from the Audi TT and certainly from Toyota's Celica. And just look, the dashboard has developed lovely dimples and cellulite. And as for these nice plastic grab handles, well, I'm sorry, but they're straight out of a disabled toilet. The whole feeling is dull and there's far too much black. But I can forgive all of this if the car is as much fun to drive as they promise it's going to be. The good news is that it is. It feels fantastic. Like its predecessors, it's mid-engined and rear-wheel drive, but with less weight this time, the car feels a lot more agile. The weight distribution really is excellent and you feel the benefits behind the wheel. The ride feels very stable, there's a lovely feeling of balance, but at the same time you're getting that fantastic feedback and response from the steering. And the stats from the engine are pretty impressive too. The 1.8 litre engine with Toyota's VVTi variable valve timing has plenty of mid-range torque enough to propel this car from 0 to 60 in a little under 8 seconds and onto a top speed of 130 miles an hour. It doesn't actually feel that quick off the mark. The mid-range performance is great, but there's certainly a bit of a look when you try for a quick getaway. But never mind, this is a great car to drive out on the open road. On a lovely sunny day, it's perfect motor. On the face of it, the MR2 seems like a pretty good car, but the one thing that really lets it down is the appalling lack of any luggage space. Now, of course, it's mid-engine, so there's no boot. There is space at the front, but that's made absolutely tiny by the fact that the space saver just about fills it up. So that really leaves you with two cubby holes behind the seats. 
and they're so small that you'd struggle to fit a bag of shopping in, let alone an overnight bag. It makes the MR2 a very impractical car to buy, and future owners will have to think really carefully about it before they decide to buy one. But is the MR2 enough of a driver's car to make up for the fact that it really is so impractical? Well, I'm afraid the answer is no. It's a great, fun car to drive, but it doesn't have the raw appeal or the skilled handling of something like the Elise. And while it is without doubt a better drive than either the MX-5 or the MGF, it doesn't offer the all-round practicality that both of those two can. No, the world of the small sports car has moved on, and despite Toyota's attempts, they haven't quite got it right. Besides, these days, I prefer a man whose sports car wears a Porsche or a BMW badge. U is for unaccompanied. Did you know that 19% of female motorists have never driven unaccompanied? V is for violations. Male drivers have admitted to more driving violations than women. And I'm sorry, it's not because we flash our eyelashes at you lot and get away with it. <laughs> Hi Claire, I've got this for you. What do I need that for? This is for the Argo Cat. What's an Argo Cat? That's an Argo Cat. How do I drive an Argo Cat then? Okay, well as you can see from the, uh, the cockpit itself, there's absolutely no steering wheel. So we've got a slightly different method to turn it. It's an automatic vehicle as well, so it's already in gear. We can turn the key. And to make the vehicle go forward, we've got a thumb throttle there. Okay. That makes the vehicle go forwards. Then to turn to the right, we pull the right lever down to stop the right hand wheels from turning to make it turn to the right. And vice versa with the left, which makes it turn to the left. Simple as that. As simple as that. So I think you better have a go. All right, on goes the lid then. JCB. Yes, girls, it's one of those things that's parked on the side of the road that the wolf whistles emanate from. But what on earth am I meant to do with this? Once I've mastered the controls, up, down, forward, backward, in, out, I can pick up a beer barrel like I've been doing it all my life. Lark falls through, there's always a job for me in the construction industry. Now I've just got to practice my wolf whistles. <sighs> now they've given me the opportunity to drive a very unique vehicle, this Land Rover. The one problem, it doesn't know it's right from its left, the steering is reversed. And the other slight problem is they want me to do it blindfold. Hi there, guys. You alright then? Not bad. How does this one work then? Right, very simple. All we're going to do is weave in and out the cones, round the one at the top, weave the way back, and drive in between these two cones. So, if I turn the steering wheel right? It goes left. And if I turn it left? It goes right. Okay, it's easy to remember. Just getting your head round it, really. Well, no time like the present. No, right, off we go. Okay. Oh. It's a lot harder! <laughs> Right, left, right, right, left, right. Oh, no! Oh, how 
Oh, weird. Guess where you are now. Did I hit anything? Oh my god. It's gone back to the start. <laughs> now I'll hazard a guess at the last time you saw one of these, it was on a farm shepherding sheep. And as I don't see any of those around here, let's go and have a play. Of course we're not on a farm, we're on a purpose-built track. And uh, watch out Mr Cameraman, duck! great day here at Mallory Park and I can tell you that this would be a really good present for that person in your life that you really think has everything and of course they're running centres all over the country and now they're really jolly nice people here because they've even offered me a vehicle to take home the only one drawback is either one of these two boys I think I'll go and see if they left the keys in that JCB